guys. Thanks, thanks for stopping in. Tonight we're going to have some beef short ribs. Real easy to do, a little bit time consuming, but oh, they are so good. Serve them up with some mashed taters and a vegetable of your choice. Man, it's great. So let's go over the ingredients and get started. Now what you'll need is some beef short ribs. I've got about a pound and a half here. It's just me, so I'm not really going to do a lot. I'm uh, going to need some tomato paste, some red wine. Don't go buy an expensive wine for this. You don't need it. I'm going to be using the cheap Merlot. Some beef stock. And for our aromatics, our mirepoix, we're going to use some onions, some celery, a carrot, a couple of bay leaves, some fresh thyme. I usually use two cloves of garlic, but this is a pretty large piece of garlic, so... I'll just use one and a little bit of ginger. I normally use fennel, but I went to three stores today and they're all out of fennel, so I'm gonna use uh, ginger in instead. Need a, an oil that's gonna stand up to pretty high heat and some salt and pepper, of course. Okay, first thing you wanna do is just start getting your pot hot and we can add our oil and we'll start braising these, these ribs. One thing I wanted to show you, I've already done three of these. If you've got this silver fat lining back here, it's a good idea just to take a real sharp knife and just skim that top layer off of that. Makes it a lot better to go do. Okay, what we'll do is we will season our ribs generously with some coarse salt, pepper, Flip them over. Do the same thing on all sides. Give them a quick toss. Rub that seasoning in there. And then what we'll do is when our skillet gets up to temperature, we'll add our oil and we'll start braising it. All right, our Dutch oven's pretty hot. We'll add us a good amount of oil. I'm using extra light olive oil. Got a high heat tolerance. Keep smoking. And we'll put our ribs meat side down in there. Now you don't want to crowd the pot if you're making more than a pound and a half. You don't want to crowd the pot because we'll end up steaming the meat instead of searing it. Alright, and what we'll do is we'll sear this on all sides. It takes about 10 minutes, 15 minutes. And then we'll move on to the next step. It's been about 15 minutes. And our ribs have browned up nicely. What we'll do is we'll plate them up. Man, look at that. They look good. Nice golden color. And we'll just plate them up and we'll set them aside. Okay, leaving the heat on about a medium high. What we want to do now is start adding our mirepoix. We'll add our onions. Now, one thing you can do before you do that, scrape up all that brown stuff. Come off that those ribs. But that's just man a haven for flavor. Alright, we'll add our onion, our carrot, our celery, and we'll soften these up usually takes about 10 minutes to do that. Man, it's just soaking up all that flavor. Then we'll add our garlic and the rest of our aromatics. I like to season every layer of whatever I'm cooking. So I'm going to dash that with a little salt, a little pepper. Our, uh, our mirepoix here. And we'll give that a time to cook. The mirepoix has cooked down. My onions are just starting to brown. Scraping all that good stuff from the meat off of there. Flavoring this vegetable mix. Okay, now what we want to do now is we're going to go ahead and add our garlic. And stir that in there. And now we've got two cups of my red wine. Man, that smells good. Now, important step number one. You have to cook this down to about one half. That's a 
that right there. Otherwise, you won't cook all the alcohol out of your wine and you will have a dish that is so tart it just doesn't taste right. So it's real important to cook your mirepoix down once you add the red wine down to about one half. You'll know it, it becomes kind of a thickish uh, texture. So let's give that a chance to, to reduce and then we'll start adding our, our meat. All right, our red wine sauce and mirepoix is cooking down. It's almost there. It's about this time I don't want to add my tomato paste. That'll give it a little thicker texture, beautiful color, great taste. Man, look at that. That's just great. Smells so good. We'll stir that in there. Our red wine still has about five, six minutes to reduce a little bit more. What we're looking for is kind of a, a dark brown color. Smells good. I can't stress the importance of allowing your mixture to reduce to one half. I'm telling you, if you don't, you're going to be sorry because the taste is not going to be there. And you'll see that brown color, that's what you're looking for. We're just looking for a little bit more to reduce to get all those alcohol and sugars out of there. Right. That's what you're looking for right there. That brown color. Man, it smells good. All right, now let's add our beef broth. I'm gonna add probably about a cup. And this is salted, so you gotta be careful with the salt. If you're using salted stock, you can buy unsalted stock and you can kind of play with it a little bit. All right, man, don't that look good. All right, let's add the ribs. Get them down in there. They're just the tops. Man, that. Get them in that sauce. All right, now. I'm going to add a little bit more broth. You might have to check on it after about an hour in the oven. Now, you want to be cooking these at 300 in your oven for about three hours. And I tell you what, the bone will fall off these ribs. I guarantee. You could go two hours at 350. You could even go 200 for about four or five hours. But what we'll do is we'll now put this in an oven, a cold oven. You want to bring that temperature up. You don't want to stick it in a real hot oven right away because what we want to do is bring this meat up to temperature for about three hours. Like I said, I'm going to put it on 300. So let's get it in the oven. And right before I do that, I'm going to throw in our thyme. I use about four, five, six leaves. Man, I love thyme. Couple bay leaves. Now we'll throw our ginger in there. And we'll give it just a quick little mix so that they'll get all down in there. Marry with that sauce. Get to know each other. Have a good time in the oven. All right, guys, let's get it in the oven. Our beef ribs are done. Man, it's just falling off the bone. Look at that. Oh my goodness gracious. That smells so good. Now what we're gonna do, look at that bone fall right off that meat. That's what you're looking for right there. Look at that. Oh man, that's gonna be so good. Look at that bone, just fell right off of there. All right, now for our sauce, what we're gonna do is we're gonna strain our mirepoix in a strainer. We're going to cover our ribs up in foil lightly to keep them warm, and then we're going to strain our mirepoix. Right. 
because the reason we do this is we're not going to eat the mirepoix. We're going to strain to get all the grit and the veggies out of that. And we're just going to get the sauce out of this. I'm going to keep those bones so I can make me some stock with something else at another time. So what we've got here is we're going to strain this and we've got a rich creamy sauce. Man that smells good. And that's what we're going to do use to pour over our ribs once we plate them up. Right, there's our finished product. Let's give it a taste test. Man, look at that. I got some mashed taters to go with it. Some garlic parmesan mashed taters. Oh my god. That is heavenly. <laughs> Hey guys, if you've got the time to do this three or four hours, you know, the prep time doesn't take much. It's just the cooking in the oven, three to four hours, depending on what your temperature is. Give this a try. I tell you what, if you'll do what I showed you to do, you will absolutely love this. When you put that first bite in your mouth, I'm telling you, you'll just, you'll just melt. Anyway, thanks for watching. I appreciate it, and be nice to everybody. Bye-bye, y'all.